Hi, I'm Sean Brink and I'm 74 years old, a crazy lady living out here in the forest. That's where I live. And for 54 years of my life, I was sure I had absolutely no artistic talent. My sister Julie was the artist. I was the one that was good at school. And one day when I was about 50, in well, my early 50s, I was sitting with my grandchild and, and she said, please draw with me, Grandma. And she gave me some crayons and I actually drew a, a rock and I went, huh, that kind of looks like a, a rock. So that began my adventure at playing with art. Every time I wanted to be in, um, wanted to create something that was perfect or perform, I would freeze up and then I would remind myself, Sean, this is about playing. Um, I would show you around my studio and my house, but there's like 17 projects everywhere on every surface and it's a real mess. So I'm going to probably turn the camera around in just a minute and just show you one of the projects I thoroughly enjoy that helps me be creative. Now, I have two friends um, that have really been an inspiration for me. Uh, one is Fran, um, who is a wonderful classical drawer. Just can, I'm just impressed, so impressed by her her ability to draw things and make them look realistic. And then there's my friend Jerry who draws these most whimsical things. For me, when I look at a blank page, unless I'm drawing bowling pin people, which is another whole story, but I tend to freeze up because I, I want to perform. But then I discovered splatter squish painting and I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you. So it all started one day, a long time ago, when my sister Julie, who's really, really good at doing modern art, said, well, why don't you try doing some modern art? And of course, when I did, I splashed some paint and I tried scratching paint on it. And just, it looked messy. It didn't look beautiful like her paintings um, looked to me. However, when I put uh, the splash blob messy thing of paint on a table and then walked away, just like, it's kind of like one of these. I came back the next day and I looked at it and I said, oh, hmm, I think I see a face in that a blob. Just like I did this afternoon when the painting that I had put out on this page, I walked past and I said, that kind of looks like a person with big eyes and, and walking. And then I looked over here and I thought, well, that kind of looks like, well, because it's Valentine's Day, a face with a valentine holding a heart. Anyways, back then, I started doing this on a regular basis. I would put splashes of paint on a page, put it on one side, and then what I do is I take the page, I squish it like this, and then I'd open it up again, and the paint that I put on here had now transferred over to here. I used, and still do, I use watercolors, nothing fancy, just uh, something I got on Amazon. And sometimes I'll use the watercolors and they're very light and, and watery. Sometimes I use very thick watercolors with lots more pigment to it. And sometimes I'll use um, acrylics. What I've done with acrylics, which is kind of fun, after I've dried a section of watercolor, sometimes I'll come in and I'll put acrylics on top of it, like this one. And you know what? When you take the page and you squish it down, you open it up, you find that the acrylics make these wonderful veins. It's, it's exciting. So people say, well, why don't you just draw the faces with watercolors? Again, that's difficult for me. When I try to draw a face with watercolors or try to make blobs of paint that look like they could be faces or creatures, I get intimidated because I feel like I'm not good enough. But when I splash paint on one side and then squish it on the other side, it frees me up to find the creatures, find the faces, to be whimsical. One of the other things I do on this particular painting is that I took some very thick watercolor and I took some drips of 91% um, isopropyl alcohol, I can't even pronounce it right, and I dripped it onto the wet paint and it created these wonderful bubbles. And when I transferred this page, just like I did before, you know, I squished the page on, this particular one is now copied onto this side. And I did the same thing with some acrylics here and some more watercolors and acrylics here. 
and I layered it. Sometimes I dry it between the paints that I put on before I added more and then squished page onto page. What it did for me is created all these opportunities to see the world differently. Kind of like looking into the clouds and seeing uh, sheep or faces in the clouds. Well, I see faces and more faces and more faces in the paints. I see creatures like a buffalo. I see fancy uh, women all dressed up. I see donkeys. Sometimes when I'm doing it, I can't help but also write something. When I drew this one, I said, you're always on my mind right here. <laughs> Standing on my mind. I use two different kinds or uh, pens, um, sometimes in several different colors. You can see right here, I use the Micron pen. And it's pretty good because it doesn't run. But I really, really like these precise pens. If I can see, you can see that. They, they're called... Precise V5, and they come in fine, extra fine, and regular. What I like about the Precise pens is that when they are placed on a little bit of water, they run. Like in this situation right here, this face, I did the outline of her face and eyes, and the black ink, because it is um, interacts really well with the water, started to bleed a little bit, so I got a, a piece of napkin and I dabbed it and I created a darker face. Here on the other side, as you can see, it was drier and the black ink stayed true to its form. Uh, let's see, oh yes, sometimes over here, I will come back afterwards and I will get a white pen and I will add a little bit of white coloring on top of all the paint that I have. I do these in the book uh, that's made by Strathmore. It is a mixed media book, and I really like it because it has a lot of texture and it also accepts wet media without wrinkling. So I put most of these in one or more of these books, but occasionally what I do is I'll take the two pages out and I'll mount them on a board, and you can see where the original seam was. I took out the, all the holes and I pasted it together. Also, one of the things I like about this one is it shows the difference between the depth of color and paint on one side and then on the side that's where you transfer the blank page onto it, you get a lot more open spaces. One of the things I also liked about this, it reminded me of going to the coast. On the left side, it's sort of like blue skies and white frothy water. Inside, it's on the right side, it's more like the interior of the Valley of Oregon, where there's a lot more people, a lot more greenery. Yeah, and, the, and the white spaces really add to, I think, uh, the definition of the creatures that I found. I'm not always good at white spaces. However, in this particular one, when I did it, I kept finding more and more and more and more. And as you can see, uh, let's see, right here, Right here, there is a face. And once I had drawn in that face, I looked at this face and went, oh, it looks like it's the opposite. And there's all kinds of that same um, yin-yang opposites in this particular painting. This face right here, there's the tongue. And yet it also when I drew it, it looks like this is the other half of it. They, they share a tongue together. And it was a little obsessive, I know, but it was a lot of fun. Now, again, I never would ever have had the creativity to draw that on a white paper. It's only that I found the shapes in the color that got me to take a risk and keep drawing. This is another one I did. Now, now all of my splash, splatter, squish uh, original setups are filled with lots and lots of color. In this particular situation... I did some round circles with paint, and when I transferred the page over, the circles came over here as well too. I used some very watery watercolor, so when I put the two pages together, it bled and ran and added all kinds of interesting shapes and designs that later on when I went back, 
I could trace and make into creatures. I thought this was kind of an interesting one. I did it during the time of when we were doing lockdown and COVID. On this side, it was like everybody was reaching within, going within themselves. And on this side, everybody was reaching out, going without, trying to find connections. So I always thought this one was about choice, that we can go within ourselves and find peace, or we can reach out and find joy, and we can also do both. Some of my drawings have very watery watercolors. I mean, just uh, uh, just hardly any color whatsoever. This one I took to the coast with my grandchild, and we took turns. She would walk past, and she would put in a drawing. And I'd walk past, and I would put in a drawing, and then we'd come back, and we'd laugh. And we did this over about a three-day period. This is another one I did with a lot of watercolor, probably richer watercolor than that first painting. So I used a kind of, um, an, almost a dry brush with lots of, of watercolor layered. So when I placed it on one side and I squished the page over to it, I got some pretty um, depth of color onto both pages. But you can see again when I use that black a precise pen here and here and here and here that it bled a little bit and I was okay with that and I actually encouraged it a little bit sometimes going in with a wet brush to let the black provide some shade. Over on this one I kind of overdid it. I uh, I kept saying, seeing faces and faces and faces and when I outlined the neck I thought a little bit of bleeding from that black pen would make a good depth around the neck so I uh, encouraged it to the paint to and the, I mean the ink from the pen to bleed. Sometimes after I've done a page like I did with this one, I think of sayings in my head. For example, I thought this lady said, you're never too old to dance and play. Or here it's time to relax. Or over here she is a purple peace freak. Uh, let's see, over here I said, I look like a marshmallow in my winter clothes. And I kind of started laughing at the comedy and I so later on I actually got out some of my um, smaller pieces of paper and I've used these to create little note cards I've copied my own art something I could never have done originally on white paper but I've made little cartoons on a piece of paper or on a note card and use these as examples there's one here I said I love my life or Oh dear, I've lost my keys. Here are some of the postcards or note cards I did, copying my own art that I had created in the splash, squish, splatter drawings. Now, again, the thought of drawing that originally, no way, but using my own quirky drawings from those splatter paintings allowed me to not be constrained by I can't do it. Sometimes I don't like the colors I've done. This one over here originally was a green, gray, icky series of colors splashed onto the paper. And I thought, Ugh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. It just looks ugly. And when I started drawing the creatures, they looked a little bit like, who is that novel? Stephen King, Creepy Clown. I mean, there was not, it was not a particularly nice looking um, series of drawings in the paint, but I kept at it because eh, because I'm stubborn, or no, because I just like to play. So I put the book out on the table, and it morphed from this gray, scary, freaky kind of drawing into eventually this one here. Now, I do we did all the drawings into the ugly colors, and then later on, I came back over the next few weeks, and I decided, well. You know, I don't necessarily like all the colors that are there. So I added, in this particular case, white and blue in the background. And I used the drawings that I'd already found and added more color. So it, I created a painting from a blob. Um, but the original, all the original creatures came from something that emerged like watching for sheep in a cloud or finding shapes in blobs of paint but this took a little bit more and sometimes I you know I think it's like overdone a little bit 
but it was fun. It was fun, and I think of this creature over here going, hey, yeah, you're going to have a little fun, and this one going, oh, freaky lady. And down here is the kid from the Oregon, um, <laughs> I don't know, some Oregon team, and someone looking up going, oh, my God, she's still painting, and a little girl who's got a balloon, and someone dancing with a cane like us old folks, and a bird, and someone wearing a bird as a hat. And that poor pig that originally started out in the drawing is dirty and ugly looking. Now it looks like a sort of bright colored spotted pig. So I'm happy with it. It's, of course, my granddaughter looks at it and goes, Grandma, you have the strangest imagination. So your turn. Get some blank pieces of paper, blob paint onto it, squish the paper over, let it dry, and then let your imagination take you to places you probably never imagined you could go. Thanks for listening.